And I, I wanted to ask you this. Is there any any part of you that's like still in wait and see mode with Dylan Riola? Like, I mean, I because I, I feel like the vast majority of people are not. And it's very well, you just say still in wait and see. I've never been in wait and see mode with Dylan Riola. Yeah, I, I mean, I and I haven't either. And it feels it really like you, it feels really weird though, right? It seems like, like you want to I be. want I want to be because well, I feel free. You don't have to you don't have to be saying he's but gonna I, be awesome. Obviously, we, we we've seen it work in Arizona, we've seen it work at Buford, we've seen it work. At, at, so what's the what's the rub then? Because we just haven't seen it work in college. Okay. It, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things that it, it very much is a different monster, and I think I think he's gonna be fine. But it's just like everybody's like, yeah, but the quarterback situation is gonna be fine this year. Is it? Well, Do I we know that. So here's sure? now. I, think, I I think it is, but it's just man, like, you don't seem very confident. In I, this. Like, I, go on an island. Say that you don't think he's going to be very good. I, I think he's going to be good. I just don't know if he's going to be. We don't have to worry about the quarterback position in his first year. Well, you would. It. Okay, so let's unpack this. You would agree, I think, that most people think. I haven't, I guess, heard a lot of people say he's going to be awesome this year. I always hear. Well, you can't get any worse than they were. Which last is, year. I think was why people are just like, that's ah, gonna be fine. Because I mean that is probably pro- can't if, be worse. As long as the quarterback doesn't turn it over an average of how many times a game did the quarterback turn it over? Like twice on average. Yeah, like if the least, floor is Jeff Sims, you're obviously yeah. gonna be much higher. So they that. and so like maybe that's really unfair for, for this discussion because it's not like we're saying the guy's gonna be awesome. We're yeah. saying the guy's not gonna be horrible. Like that's how I kind of begin and end every conversation. I think it's very fair to say. Man, Nebraska has had a lot of players come into the program over the last however many years with the weight of the world on them, and they've never been able to live up to it. We've talked about Adrian Martinez a couple of yeah. times during the show. Adrian Martinez came in, and this, and and we had him on our show, at asking him kind of what advice would you give to Dylan Raiola? I've because had him on my show, and you've had him on your <laughs> show a few times. Um, and when you think back to Adrian, Adrian came in with a lot of hype, yes, yeah, but it was less him as a player, like. When he signed with Nebraska, or when he committed to Nebraska, how many players, or how many fans, rather, had ever watched his film? The answer, my guess, would be very, very few. 0.005% of Husker fans, before he got that offer, had ever watched his film. And so, people got excited about him, less because of him, and more because of the idea. Because, oh, he was the first guy that received a phone call, and it's Scott Frost, he must be good. Dylan is different, because Dylan's hype is all based off of Dylan yeah. and his and his last name, but well, it's based off of him on his own merits. And so as hyped as Adrian was, that Adrian's is situation is even a little more different, too, because he had the torn labrum in his shoulder. So even the highlights you're watching were, like, were his yeah, junior it's, season. It's a couple of years yeah. ago. We're wondering how that's going to unfold. And this time around, there is an expectation. Like, the I would I would say the hype equivalent for Dylan is actually closer to what Adrian had going into his sophomore yeah. year than what he had going into his freshman year. And so I I say all that just to acknowledge like, look, we have seen guys come in here before with these expectations and never live up to it. And so if you if you want to pause, if you Jimmy Allen says I want to pause on this, I think that you are very much within your right to do. See, that. and I, I think a lot of people like have the feeling. Speaking of Adrian, like his freshman season when he, I think it was twenty two touchdowns he equated for. If you count running and passing, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was fifteen. I think you're right. I think it was fifteen and seven. If if Dil- it just feels like if Dylan Royal, Ray- it was eighteen and seven. Maybe yeah, twenty five. Sure, yeah. but it just feels like if you, if you're talking about Dylan Royal equating for twenty touchdowns. Wait, if that defense just doesn't take a step I know, back, I know, right? That's a lot of wins. And, and, and you look at the way that schedule stacks up, specifically the the the, the earlier portion of it, it, feels like it could get really, really special around here, really, really fast. Chris in Montana texts in. I don't think people are in wait and see mode on Dylan Raiola because who else is in the room? Sure, he could probably win a job anywhere in the country, but it's not like he's got Howard in the same room like Ohio State does, for example. Yeah, I mean, I think there is something to there is less wait and see right now because speaking of Adrian again. He had to come in, and at the time, Patrick O'Brien was still on the roster for a few more weeks as spring ball began. Tristan Obviously, Jebbia. Tristan Jebbia was on the roster, and then some other guys, too. So, like, it did feel like a legit competition. I didn't think that he was going to win the starting job. Going into spring ball, I thought it was going to be Jebbia. See, I, was, and, I was of the complete opposite of yeah. I, I didn't. I, I don't think, just, and, and not because of their talent level or their skill set or whatever. I just don't think when you come out and say, Hey, we're this new coaching staff, and the very first call we was made to this guy, yeah. and we got him. That he's like, it's Dylan Ryle is going to be the starting quarterback, and yeah. that's how I felt about Adrian Martinez at the time too. Matthew says, "I wish I knew what people thought of Frazier when he was coming into the program." Right, it's an interesting case study. So now the difference is, Frazier was the he was viewed as the final piece to the puzzle. Right. Adrian is not viewed as the final piece because he was looked at the first piece. Correct. Yeah. He is he is viewed as the guy that is going to start the process of of making its way back, whereas Frazier was the last 
it was like sweet, awesome. Now they're going to finally be able to do it. He lived up to that hype. Yeah. His hype, his see, that's it is. I love hearing that name because the hype for Frazier was he is going to help Nebraska win a national title. Dylan is not that. John and I had a discussion, I think, in December. Man, it would be amazing if he was. <laughs> but the question was like, what are you expecting from him in his career? And I thought that that was such a great question because as excited as everyone was throughout the month of December, and then he signs, we never really discussed truly, what does this mean and what will he do as a player? And I think a lot of that is because of the question marks we still have about Matt Rule, right? Like, it's like we feel like it's headed in the right direction. It feels like there was some momentum at the end of the last season. It feels like they're a quarterback away from getting it figured out, but we don't know that. Mm -hmm. Like, there's <laughs> not to bring up the shoe dropping again, but it just kind of feels like, you know, we, we've seen what it looks like when you go into year two with a ton of expectations and it doesn't pan out and the residual effect that can have. Now, it doesn't feel like that's going to happen with this coaching staff. Does that mean it absolutely will not? No, but it just it more than likely will not. What What is your big picture question with the program moving in the right direction under Matt Rule? My big um time management, closing out games, situational awareness. Yeah, uh, like that costing them things yeah, in the long because term. Yeah, it, it was a problem at Temple. It was a problem at Baylor. And, and occasionally and it had, was a he, problem last year. And it was a problem last year. And occasionally at those two, uh, specifically at Baylor, you had the athletes to kind of be able to erase that situation. Uh, I don't know what it looks like when he does it. You know what I mean? I don't remember if it was with you or if it was with John recently, but the thing that I think is always interesting is when you look at co coaches, rather, who have been judged as being horrible at clock management. And I think the best example is always like Andy. Or, uh, uh, Les Miles. I was going to say Andy Reid. Yeah. Um, looking beyond college football. Andy Reid, we never talk about that anymore. Right. Why is that? Because I don't his think he got better. His hands are heavier these days. Well, I was just going to, because he has freaking Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback. Yeah. And like, when you have the guy. Which makes that, your situational awareness better. When it, you have a guy out on the field, that's an extension. Bingo. You just said it. You know, when you have athletes that can, you know, maybe make up for deficiencies. You know who else can make up for deficiencies? A really good quarterback. Yeah. And so perhaps he is going to be that person. Yeah. I, I agree. And with, maybe the offensive line to some degree, too. Not to yeah, I mean, step look, on your sub, well, subject there. but Well, and if you, I mean, look, if you, you're winning games by 20 points, you know. I don't have to worry about time yeah. management. It's not matter if you're up right? by 40. Yeah. If every game goes down Ask to a Ryan touchdown, Day. if every game goes down to a field goal, then yeah, the, the magnifying glass is going to be a little bit closer on everything. Sure. But if it's not, then, you know, it, it Which, only comes up in certain games. And I know I brought up Les Miles a minute ago. I think that was a lot of the problem is there was a lot of situations where LSU was blowing people out and he didn't really have to. So when yeah. times came up, it was a little difficult for him to manage. Yeah, and he would do some goofy stuff. But yeah, when it showed itself the most, it was in some of those you know, big kind of uh, situations. I, I think we're like, once we get past UTEP and if they're able to beat Colorado and they start off two and oh, I think it's going to be really fun to watch recruiting around. Like if Dylan lives up to the hype and yep. it's like, not necessarily you're going out, and you're scoring 49 points a game, but you could look at it and say, okay, there's, there's something here and it's as good as advertised. Watching the, the interested parties come sniffing around. is going to be a lot of fun too. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. So there you go. Talking football.